Thank you, dear colleagues. Thank you for the invitation. I would like to talk about the management of uh, 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 surgical management of uh, uh, backbone malignancies. Talking about the structure uh, of uh, um, backbone tumors, they we say that primary tumors is no more than four percent. Mostly, uh, we uh, most of the patients who we treat. Uh, somehow uh, surgical or in the other way, it's uh, metastatic tumors. Main target ones for women uh, is uh, breast cancer, reaching 65-75 percent. For, for, it's for female, for men, it was the same uh, percentage is uh, prostate cancer, 30 to 40 percent uh, lung cancers. Next place, kidney cancer, in almost 100 percent. The uh, uh, backbone. Um, so to say, uh, uh, so the backbone is impaired, it's spongy, uh, the part is uh, impaired in impaired in case of myeloma disease. So typical location, uh, it's a posterior uh, vertebral body part, which is uh, um, conditioned with the specifics of uh, um, uh, uh, blood supply, uh, lots of anastomosis and uh, uh, so to say uh, and cancerous bone uh, structure we have lots of classification both uh, for uh, pathological post-traumatic uh, fractures and as of today no matter how uh, uh, how no matter how we try to use these classifications they from practical point of view are not that so to say usable but the classification was, which i present here everything shown in red it is the area of oncovertebrology uh, where, where oncovertebrology could be impaired. It's metastasis, myeloma disease, primary tumor uh, uh, fractures. Uh, other pieces, it was treated by vertebrologists. Osteoporosis, gemangiomatosis, infections, uh, and blood, uh, blood disease uh, disorders. And the, the most right column, it's mostly post-traumatic uh, spine, um, uh, so to say, uh, issues. And and, uh, which are treated by traumatologists. The, uh, this uh, uh, fracture classification appeared quite uh, recently, uh, and when we were studied in medical school, we talked about primary tumor tumors, but here appeared several types of primary tumors where between benign malignant tumors, uh, there appeared so-called intermediate um, tumors, and today the number of those intermediate tumors is ever-growing, and quite frequently our um, colleagues, the morphologists, uh, they uh, organize uh, clinical, so to say, uh, c conferences uh, to discuss uh, the malignant uh, malignancy rate of s such masses. Uh, diagnostic algorithm usually is quite simple. Uh, of course, uh, we MRI is the first place, uh, or CT scan, osteocentigraphy uh, for differential diagnosis uh, from uh, inflammatory processes. Uh, and other tumors, and geography of adjusted uh, blood vessels as a pre-op uh, preparation for patients with uh, large masses. We use PET-CT for uh, when suspecting uh, that the process is uh, so widely spread, and the most important uh, is a biopsy of uh, impaired uh, vertebra. vertebra. And its uh, biopsy usually is a first action, uh, which tends to be the basis uh, for further treatment algorithm. And you see that with such complex algorithm, a biopsy here is shown as one mm, uh, red uh, rectangular for benign uh, uh, malignant, uh, primary malignant and metastatic tumors. And at the end, the decision made by, together by vertebrologists chemotherapist and radiologist and such a, a multidisciplinary decision is the most fundamental and the most to say advisable at the current stage what are the indications uh, for surgery of uh, uh, vertebral tumors first of all we're talking about uh, primary tumors or, or single solitary metastasis in case of operable or uh, unknown primary mm, uh, lesion also, uh, another one is considerable pain syndrome if uh, conservative treatment is, treatment is a failure. Then neurologic deficit related to compression of uh, um, spine or, uh, or, 
spinal radiuses. Then uh, pathologic fractures, progressing instability after radiotherapy. Then uh, tumors, which are uh, radiotherapy resistant, and multiple metastases uh, for biopsy to verify their morphology. What are the factors? determining uh, surgical management approaches. First of all, uh, it's a malignancy rate of the primary tumor. Depending on the number of points uh, for the, this classification, uh, and the scoring system, we can uh, use intermeter scale to, uh, to define uh, our approach. So uh, slow growing, moderate, uh, moderate velocity growing, and rapidly growing tumors. Then presences of metastasis of uh, vital organs, it's lungs, liver, kidneys, uh, brain, and also uh, metastatic disease uh, of the bones. So uh, it determines the surgical management uh, further on. It consists of three com components, constituents. The top of this iceberg is an uh, oncological uh, constituent, uh, and the basis is orthopedic uh, con uh, component, meaning the stabilization issues, and the issues of uh, uh, completeness of decompression and restoration of, uh, restoration of uh, spine uh, uh, function. What are the principles? Uh, what, is the, what is the, so to say, oncological principle when treating uh, vertebral uh, tumors? First of all, uh, as I mentioned, uh, pre op verification of tumor or its biopsy, uh, determination of its uh, features, location, spread, metastasis, Sens sensitivity of the tumor to combined treatment. It could be either pharmaco or chemo or radiation therapy. And according to any kink, uh, classification of 1980C, surgical treatment of the tumor could be either radical resection with tumor removal and block along with involved uh, organs. So the question is, if we can do it uh, always uh, in orthovertebrology patients? Of course not. It's not always possible because, because anatomical location of um, spinal tumors Anatomically, the tumors are uh, interrelated with, uh, 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 so to say, uh, with the spine and its uh, uh, and conductivity of the spinal uh, pathways. Uh, so, if we remove today the tumor, if we cannot remove uh, today, it's, it's today it's not hard to remove the tumor of the posterior complex. Uh, of the vertebral body, it's not a big deal, but removal of the tumor of the foray area is not a big deal. So sometimes it requires two-stage surgery, which is rather traumatic for our patients. What are the factors which negatively affect disease prognosis? Of course, here we talk about the aggressive growth of the primary tumor, the young age, short time uh, without metastasis. Uh, large volume of metastatic tumors, combination of all metastasis with visceral metastasis, pathological fracture present, and no signs of rep bone reparation uh, even when chemo radiation therapy was uh, already started, was been started. Uh, uh, so, uh, modern tometer scoring also helps to define uh, the surgical uh, uh, management. So, in type A, uh, we remove the, the tumor, uh, the tumor is within uh, the vertebral body. B, we also can do radical treatment when the tumor is, uh, affects the vertebral component and multiple uh, vertebral tumors is symptomatic treatment or decompressive stabilizing intervention. Depending on the ways for internal vertebral stabilization, uh, we uh, define the type of surgery type and type of plant uh, radiation therapy because our patients usually are treated with combined um, methods. So you don't know, we, in case of spondylectomy, we should apply combined fixation of the anterior and from anterior and posterior surgical approaches. I will talk about it a bit later. In case of subtotal spondylectomy, uh, posterior fixation. In case of corpectomy, anterior or posterior fixation, usually combined one. In case uh, with resection of vertebral body, anterior fixation. In case of extended laminectomy, posterior fixation for uh, thoracic and lumbar um, uh, bone parts, uh, bone sections. 
Because there is always a big question how to treat. Should buy the metastasis, metastasis primary, malignant primary, but not tumors also other uh, issues like osteoporosis. The next question is if we use systemic treatment, local therapy, uh, radiation therapy, or surgery. And with surgery today, uh, it's uh, we have quite a large uh, uh, spectrum. It could be of methods. It could be vertebra vertebroplasty, decompressive uh, interventions, corporectomy, and uh, spondylectomy. So, in case of uh, non-complicated metastasis, it's always, always we use systemic treatment combined with local uh, treatment, while with uh, complicated metastasis when uh, mm, uh, spinal conductivity is impaired, uh, there is always uh, combined treatment, meaning surgical decompression plus, plus, plus stabilization plus the use of local chemotherapy or radiation therapy. And uh, lately, uh, radio surgery is going to be more and more popular and more and more actively evolving area of medicine. It's not always uh, possible to radically remove a tumor, which is uh, next, next, like next uh, to the uh, uh, next to the, so to say, uh, spinal cord or to some, uh, it's just other organs. So sometimes some solitary um, focuses, we can use radiosurgical, uh, radiosurgery quite effectively. As a clinical sign, uh, in case of upper uh, cervical uh, lesions like C1, C2, there are several methods. Uh, we can remove tumors uh, via mouse. As the first stage and the second stage, we could use uh, occipital spondylodesis. Uh, we could see uh, chordom of the body, uh, uh, C2. Uh, so the first stage, we remove the tumor uh, via the uh, mouse approach and then mm, on the toilet, uh, remove the tumor. In case of the virtual body is involved, corporectomy is used. And they placed and we replace the uh, removed body with a so called mesh or with eyes uh, auto or auto or alloplastic uh, mm, uh, grafting. To improve stability for additional fixation, we could use mesh plus, uh, so to say, um, fixating plates. In case of total uh, vertebral body uh, impairment and uh, with no, uh, with absent supportive function, we use also uh, body endoprosthesis as well. We see chondrosarcoma C4. Uh, uh, for uh, thoracic uh, spine, decompressive laminectomy, it's a method of choice if there is a widely spread process with the signs of impaired uh, spinal cord uh, conductivity. We use decompressive laminectomy or circular decompression depending uh, on uh, tumor spread. The use of so transpedicular uh, fixator, which could be placed, uh, which could be mm, seen at the thoracic, thoracic lumbar, and lumbar uh, spine. After removal of the posterior complex or after decompression, uh, we can use transpedicular fixation as a symptomatic treatment. Then uh, uh, lumbar pelvis fixation. Uh, this is, you see the stabilization after removal uh, of the lesion at the level of. Uh, a lumbar uh, sacral uh, mm, spine or the upper sacrum part. Uh, then vertebral body uh, replacement. Oh, it's a new field of interventions which we use quite frequently. It makes possible for the patients after corporectomy and uh, placing of uh, endoprothesis. Mm, uh, it makes possible to avoid second stage of surgery after the use of transpedicular fixation and uh, we can verticalize those patients in the nearest postal period. Here you see how uh, intervertebral uh, prosthesis looks like. Here in the uh, cylinder, we install our transplant. You see uh, breast metastasis. Um, uh, in, uh, in here you see a new method for paravertebral tumors. It's uh, uh, endoscopic transosal surgery. Uh, it has rather narrow indications, but since it is really uh, minimally invasive, it is rather effective technique, and it gets more and more of interest 
and he is uh, more and more used in our patients. And uh, another important uh, piece uh, is a surgery of coccygeal tumors. It's a big uh, intervention, which is uh, quite frequently associated with impaired uh, or lesions of the uh, pelvis organs. And today we use combined treatment methods uh, and, uh, so to say, combined approach. You see the cathedral uh, hydroma after removal of S3 uh, and 4 tumors. You see such a large, uh, so to say, tumors. Uh, vertebrectomy. There is a, a single stage or two stage vertebrectomy. And you see it's a two stage surgery. Uh, initially, the posterior uh, support complex was uh, completely called removed, and second stage was installed into prothesis. So, this method makes possible to completely remove the entire uh, vertebra uh, along with the uh, uh, so evolving pathologic process. The use of uh, embolization allows us quite frequently, especially in case of hypervascular lesions, to decrease the timing for uh, surgery and decrease blood loss. In case of Grunenwald uh, uh, surgery, we could use uh, endoprosthesis and it shows to be quite effective and the special place uh, for uh, backbone surgery uh, we give to multidisciplinary interventions uh, along with our colleagues like thoracic surgeons, vascular surgeons and sometimes we uh, uh, ask for help from our obstetricians uh, gynecologists and so only such a multidisciplinary approach to treating cancer patients today makes possible to work on the problems and challenges we face and thank you for your attention